Hello everyone, this is Bradley. This is a procedural guitar string animation that people requested a long time ago. I hope you have watched the demonstration so that you know what we are going to make. So let's just start. So first I would like to play, uh, briefly discuss the, some approach to the problem solving. Because if you have watched Live No Liao, I also have no idea about what I'm going to make. Especially this time there is no reference. Just to say that um, many times when to approach such kind of problems, um, even if I'm going to instance many different strings in the future, but the first thing I'm thinking is how to actually make a single one to work. And I think this is very important to think because if you make multiple copies uh, at the first hand, it will actually makes the entire project rather complicated and it may not work in the way that you wish. So the first thing I'm going to do is to use distributed matrices to generate a spline. I'm going to change the, only, I'm only going to leave the Y division and let's take a look with the vector that we generated. So we generate a lot of points and by changing this length we can increase the length of all these points. And I'm going to take a spline from points and smooth better spline curve objects output. These three nodes helps to connect all these splines uh, connect all these points into a spline and I'm going to spruce the spline and output that into as a curve object. So now by changing these bevel depths we get an actual curve object. Okay. So this is very straightforward. And the next part is very very simple. And it's the core concept about how we actually make the guitar string to be played. So here I'm going to take a offset vectors. And what you can see, if I cancel all x, y, z, and then there is no effect at all. And if I change, uh, increase the x values, then it goes to right. If I decrease the x value, it goes to left. And it's possible, uh, so now I'm, offset, I'm using one value to offset all vectors as a together. So that's why this plan has been offset completely. But what if, if I use the combined vector? So now I'm not really doing anything special, but just to separate x, y, z from a single value to a three separate value to control them. And then I'm going to take a float range. So now I'm actually generating multiple numbers instead of using one number to control this x value. And I'm going to put these vectors into the amount so that I'm generating um, a number for each of vectors to control them. So now because this amount, the start and the stop is range from 0 to 1. So I have an offset starting from 0 to the offset that end as 1. And by changing this 1, I'm going to change the, the end offset as well. And I can also change the start offset. So what I want to do is actually very simple. It's just to use this start and stop to manipulate what will happen the, or, or the offset in the middle. So here I'm going to take a map range and the input minimum and the maximum is still 0 and 1 because that's the start and the stop. And by changing this output and the maximum and the minimum, we can do basically the same thing as we did on start and stop. So you might wonder, okay, why we added this extra node to do the same function that we can accomplish in this float range only because there is an interpolate option which is, tends to be very important and you don't have this option in the float range maybe someday you will have but at least now you don't have such a thing uh, what's important in this interpolation you can try to change the interpolation so that you can get a kind of interesting curvature that you don't usually give from the float range only so this is one part second part is by changing this interpolation so let's take a look with the interpolation. So let's take a interpolation input and hit W goes to down. You can see a viewer, which is the interpolation viewer. You can see how linear and the sigmoid actually looks like. And there is another node which is called mirror interpolation. And if we take away the chain and you can see what it actually generates is just a, a mirror the results from the linear or sigmoid that you've seen earlier. And if you activate these chains, then it will give a real mirror the results that has 
that has been um, mirrored in the middle. This is the idea, which also means uh, usually from the output minimum and the maximum, so we get minimum on one end and the maximum on the other end. But if we plug this mirrored interpolation in, what we actually have is the minimum on two ends, but the maximum in the middle. So you can play around with this value so that I get a kind of interesting results. Um, I don't know actually which result is probably the best, uh, but feel free to play around with that and you can get kind of an idea. Uh, another thing I would like to remind you is um, besides using the default interpolation, it's also possible to make a your own interpolation. But it's kind of hard to mirror everything by yourself. So I, in whatever cases, I would recommend you to use this mirrored interpolation. So you can make kind of interpolation by yourself and put that to mirror. And you get a kind of whatever, whatever stuff that you can potentially play around with. In this case, I'm just going to stick around with the sigmoidal, uh, which I think will be fine. But you can definitely try with other types as well. But I will stick on the sigmoid for this moment. And to make it two wave, there are several ways. One way is just to change this output minimum and the maximum. But uh, thinking about in the future that we are going to work with different splines, I'm going to use this fall off value. So basically, they both value will do the same thing. But in this particular particular case, for some reason, I'm going to stick on this fall off. So when the fall off is one, it exerts full effects of this map range. But if the fall off goes to zero, then we just get a straight line, there is no offset at all. But it's also possible that you just type in negative one, then you get a completely offset results as being shown from the map range. So this is kind of idea. Next, next question is simply about how to loop between negative one and one. And to talk about that, it's basically just a sine wave. So we can take a float mass and we can change the type to sine. And let's basically talk about the sine. There you can check the Wikipedia about how sine works, but I just would like to talk about the several aspects to manipulate this sine. So it's possible that you simply put a time info to the sine wave. Then you get generate a kind of waving number. So by just hitting this, uh, just play the animation, you can see the waving number that range from negative one to one. So you already get what you actually want. In this case, just to say that, um, if you feel the sine wave is changing too fast, then it means you just need to divide a number with this time info. Because this time info is directly going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, very fast. Basically, every frame is changing. So maybe it's too fast for the change of numbers. So this is one part. Another part of this is that this sine function ranges from negative 1 to 1. But your fall can potentially go beyond 1, uh, as you wish. So sometimes if you would like to change the magnitude, you can definitely change the magnitude from the map range. It's definitely possible, but it's also possible that you just add another mass node and multiply it with another number to make it a two. So that the output range from negative one to one changed from negative two to two, something like that. So it does not matter how you actually change that, but these are the way to work with sine function. In this particular case, I think I just don't really want to add an additional node, so probably just use output maximum to change the maximum. Something like that. Put this into the fall, and it will automatically generate a constant fall to get everything right. So now if you play the animation, then you get kind of wave animation, and you, by just uh, decrease the division, then it goes faster. And if you just uh, directly, without any division, then you can definitely see it's going to, to be too fast. Personally speaking, I don't like it, but maybe this is something that you are looking for. The next thing is how to actually duplicate this kind of spline. So here, let's first take a look with the node tree. I don't think this is a pretty super large node tree, but any, anyway, you get kind of an idea. What I'm going to do is, um, it's possible that you just duplicate the entire node to make a complete new splines. So now you get a two splines. But obviously you think if I'm going to make a five spline or 10 spline, more splines, then I have to duplicate this tree for multiple times. And this is completely done. So in such a case, if you are doing kind of a repetitive function, I would recommend you to actually use the loop. In this case, let's just take a loop input very easily. 
So here I'm just going to put all these subdivisions into the parameter. So important parameter gets into the parameter, which makes sense. So output the maximum into the parameter. The interpolation can also go into the parameter. And this sub, uh, division can also go through the parameter. And let's name that as time division. Output the maximum, you can just name that as amplitude. Y division, name that as resolution. And let's take a look what else we can actually change. I think uh, basically that's it. And I'm going to remove this spline. So here in this output, I'm going to hit the plus icon and hit a spline list. Uh, it's possible that you generate the curve object within the loop. But because we're going to generate a multiple loop, I think the best way is just to make this curve object output outside the loop. And since everything is in the loop, now this turns to be a preset. So if you hit W goes to right, then this is a preset. And you no longer need to care about this entire, the, what's actually in the loop. Because you can readily change that. So if we hit this iteration, so now we get a one spine. If we hit iteration, we get actually two spine. But uh, the issue is that now, even if we act actually generate multiple spines, they are together. That's why it does not look like it generates multiple spines while it actually generates multiple spines. So I'm going to take a distribute matrices and put the matrices, uh, and I'm going, I'm going to replicate all these spines on X axis. So take that down to one. Next step is to take a transform spline. And here's the interesting thing. It's possible that you put the spline list, the plural into the splines, but it's not a possible to put the matrices into transformation because one is a plural, the other is not. So every time if you get this get list elements, it, it's a sign that you need to use a loop. So it's possible you just select a node, hit W goes to right to make a spline list. But since we already have a loop, node for this function. What you can do is just in this iterator to so take a matrix list. Again, I've uh, made uh, a new tutorial talking about the loop, uh, the basics of using the loop node. So if you are not sure with the, the difference between the iterator and the parameter, you can take a look to that. And in this transform spine node, so I'm going to cut out everything. It's possible that you put these matrices into transformation. So what the loop does essentially does is you input a list and this loop will be run several times for each element within the list so that now within the loop I only input a single element and then it goes to transformation correctly. So here I'm going to put the splines into the spline socket and put our transform the spline as a final output. Sorry, my mouse recently actually broke. And you can put the matrices into the matrix list. So now we actually duplicate the, the spines for several times. And you can increase the amount so that generates more streams. Uh, but the guitar actually only have five strings maximum, right? And this is complete procedure. You can change the length, you can change the amplitude, you can do whatever things. But just be aware one thing that's now, all this spine actually works at the same time. They're 100% of the same copy to each other. But uh, if you're playing the guitar, I think only the string that has been hit will be played, while the other string should not be played. Which means we should add additional function to this the, 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 the guitar string. Which means we should add additional function to this guitar string unit. So maybe you already realize the additional function is actually about the fourth. So let's take a, so first we take our empties, which is the controller, and I'm going to take a object controller fourth. And we can simply just take our empties as a controller, 
or maybe you want to use a customized controller so you can put that outside the loop so let's in this parameter let's take a fall off the more important thing is I would like to evaluate that so I would like to evaluate it based on the location of our transformation so put the fourth into the fourth and the matrix into the matrix so we are evaluating our fourth based on the location of the matrix and the, our matrix is the way uh, is actually the location where each string goes so only if my controller actually touches all these metrics or touches each of these string then the entire animation should be triggered and that's basically the idea and in this case what we can potentially do is simply just to take a float mass and multiply them and basically it's done so now if I play this animation so you can see only the string where my controller is located will be played and if you move the controller then it will only affect some of the string and you can change this fourth type so that you affect more string or skate the fourth down so that it only affects one string just to be realized because this is a sign function and currently in animation node it does not really contain a memory so that to make the string to decay which means if your fourth is affecting the stream the effect will be continued forever but it's also possible that you're just uh, trying to keyframe this fourth and just uh, running down so that you get whatever kind of results as has been saying from the demonstration so basically just the keyframe the fourth and so on and so forth and you can use this fourth width and the offset there's also a tutorial talking about how to understand all these parameters and so on, especially for object controller fourth. So, which is also a thing that you can potentially take a look. Something like that. Um, I think basically this is all about it. So, if you have any questions, then definitely just uh, I don't know, comment below or whatever other things. But I think this is basically it. So, I hope you enjoy this tutorial, and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.